Well, here we are in the office tank again. And I want to say thank you to those of you who offered suggestions about my snail problem. I've actually come up with an easy way to deal with it. Uh, but I had a better idea offered by somebody just yesterday, a good friend by the name of Jimmy, uh, who suggested, based on his research, that I put a container with some lettuce in the bottom of the tank, and the snails would go in the container after the lettuce, and then you just pick that up, and away you go with the snails intact, because they attack the lettuce. Great idea. Meanwhile, what I've been doing is when I put in the algae tabs, uh, which the fish love, I've noticed that the snails gather around it, obviously. And so I take my small net, I gather up the snails and a little bit of gravel under them, and dump them in the toilet and flush them away. That along with reaching in and as they uh, accumulate on the glass, squash them so that the fish can eat the meat inside those snails. And so that's what I've been doing and the snail population is much reduced, thank you. And I'm going to put that container uh, down here in the front where you see the baby Amazon sword plants uh, starting to grow. Uh, they've recently come out of the, the mother plant here in this tank. And uh, hold on one second while I put in a container. And let's see how that's going to work. And so I'm just putting in this white container. I've got to do it so that, whoops, there goes the lettuce. Come on. All right. I'm going to reach down here. And so I've, I've got a problem because I put the uh, new plants down there. Well, maybe I'll do it in the back. And then I'm just laying it behind that big sword plant. And then I think you can see it back there. And then we'll uh, check out the trap, as it were. And meanwhile, I'll give you an idea of what happens when you put an algae tab in there. You see it coming down to the bottom now. And I don't know what my other problem is. You see the fish attacking it already. They, it's amazing how quickly they notice that added to the tank. And before long, all the fish will be gathered around and pecking at it, and the snails will accumulate around it. And then, like I said, with a small net, just take those bigger snails that seem to go to it and throw them away. Now, it's also interesting, I've been having a problem here, and maybe somebody's got some ideas about this too, with as clear as that is down there, as I go up in the tank, you see how milky the water looks? I think it has to do with the LED lights that I put on there. And uh, th this water has been uh, exchanged just uh, two days ago. And it really, I'm not sure what that is. When I do exchange the water, I really vacuum the gravel. And I was quite surprised because last time, uh, two weeks ago, I took all the plants out and I really did a major cleaning of the gravel. A lot of debris down there, which is good for the plants, of course, but I was uh, surprised when I came back to change the water uh, just a week later how much black uh, debris was in that gravel. So I fished it out again, and I'm not sure if that's contributing to that milkiness or not. But meanwhile, you certainly can see what's going on with the fish here. And we've got a lot more black molly babies, and the adults are doing well. Some of them are maintaining that liar tail trait as they go. And the females, they always look so pregnant, as you can see here in this view. And I'll go in a little bit closer and see what happens. Maybe go out of focus, maybe not. Whoops. You get the idea. Now that's, uh, there's about four small sword tails in here that are growing up from the babies, as you can see, brick red. 
Uh, some of the guppies, the blonde guppies, uh, seem to be doing well here. And I'll tell you, I really enjoy guppies. That's a trait probably from when I was a young kid. Uh, I love the coloration on guppies. And some of these guppies here have that coloration. It's just a, a rainbow of colors on them. I've got some interesting guppies here. As you'll see, they have a split tail. And uh, it's a trait that's been carried on. You can see that one chasing the female. And there's quite a few of them. They look very similar. They've got that clear split tail. And uh, I've gotten to like that. You can see quite a few of them in the corner tank earlier uh, when I show you that. So anyway, any ideas of what the milkiness is about? Uh, I'm trying not to overfeed them. Obviously, they're still hungry. You can certainly you can see them going after that algae tab. Usually, I put two in there so it splits up that crowd instead of what you're seeing here. But anyway, that's uh, what's going on in the office tank. Nothing else new here. I add a couple other plants in here uh, that my wife found over at Hidden Reef. She was uh, thought it looked nice. They haven't grown enough to be able to show them off here, but uh, they're in this corner. And it's a uh, cryptocarine, I believe. It's a frilly leafed, a long leafed uh, plant that's going to grow out. You can see some of the leaf right in the center here. If the fish will move over just a little bit. There, you can see that, that long bowed leaf, the frilliness of it. That's the type of plant it is. Anyway, that's the black, black mollies are doing well. I've had that happen once before where the black mollies do very well for a short amount of time, like maybe a year, and then they all disappear. Well, they're doing well now, and they're multiplying, and the younger fish are surviving, so it's all well. Here we are in the corner tank, and uh, the challenge here has been the duckweed. I can't believe how quickly that multiplies. I mean, within the course of maybe five days to a week, the top of this 55-gallon tank will be totally covered to the point where light isn't getting through to the big plants you're seeing here. Uh, we went over to Hidden Reef recently, really uh, looking to get a couple of bettas, because as you'll see, the maternity tank is back into a betta tank. And I had watched a video and talked about what mates you could put in with a, a betta. And of course, it was neons and the Otocinclus catfish. And you may see on the glass here, I've got four of them in here. They tend to school together, believe it or not. But he's right there in the center on the glass. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. There he is. I've got a new tripod here and it's not allowing me to adjust things the way I want it to. But anyway, you can see it hanging on the glass there. There's three others. And we did find some bettas. Now, we never spend a lot of money on bettas. Uh, they're just a very pretty fish, even the 299 ones at Hidden Reef. And they had a large selection. And so I let Pam, my wife, uh, have her choice. And she picked out three beautiful ones. And he was out here just before. I'm hoping to capture him before we get through, show you what he looks like. And what else did we add in here? Oh, the angelfish. Uh, she found uh, some small angelfish on sale for $4.99. And so we got four of them. And I don't see them now, of course. So I'm going to pause this until I can find them for you. Let's see if a little bit of flake food doesn't bring out the fish I'm trying to show you. I just put a little bit in there. It turns into a snowstorm. But that does get the fish moving around, doesn't it? And you see those uh, uh, pearl garamis. They're still very small here. The bigger ones I moved over to the bow tank. And what we also got the other day, uh, let's see if I can show it to you without turning around too much, some more neon tetras. I wanted a couple of them for the meta tank based on that video recommendation. But at the same time, I uh, only had about four in here at the time. And they were only $1.49, so I was able to get a, a ten of them all together. So four went over with the betta, see if the betta eats them or whether they 
You're supposed to move pretty fast, and that way they thrive even despite being with the beta. Plants in here are doing well as always. It's a forest. And uh, I do not see those angelfish that I had promised you. And that darn betta, gorgeous betta, uh, with reddish body and uh, reddish fins with a white tinge around them. And I'm going to eventually pause this again until I see them come out. And there's, like I said, there's four small angelfish here. Oh, there's one coming in from the center. Uh, you might be able to see them there, right dead center in the back. They're marble angels, very pretty. You can see them just to the left, here he comes to the front. All right. And so I'm not going to try and move this camera too much, given I, I can't use this tripod. You can't move it around. But he's zipping in the back, and uh, take my word for it, there's three others like him in there. And what I'm really trying to do is get that bed out here so you can see what I'm talking about. Because words just don't describe how pretty he looks. That leafy plant I always talk about as having purchased at uh, Disc Madness, again, is thriving. And it's offering nice protection for the smaller fish and maybe some of the babies that get born in here. Uh, despite the variety of fish, babies really don't make it well. Here comes one of those angels, uh, just uh, behind that green leaf. The big green leaf, where did he disappear to? Oh, there he is. Okay, you can see him now, right, right against the reddish of those leaves. And uh, i trying to think what else is new here. I put in uh, five of the Autosynclus cats in here, and they tend to stay on the front glass. They seem to be doing well. And between that and a huge pleco, it's gotten much too big. I really should uh, find him a new home. But uh, he's uh, keeping that glass clean, too. And so that makes it very easy to maintain this tank. I don't have to be scrubbing the glass all the time. There he is. He's out. Let's see if we can get him from the light. If I zoom in too close, I won't be able to keep up with him. There we go. Now you got some idea, even though he's behind the plants. See the fins? Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, you're not seeing him directly, but you certainly can get an idea of what his fins look like. I apologize for the jerkiness of this tripod. Coming toward the front, that's a good sign. Oops. Here he comes. Anyway, you get the idea. So that's the corner tank. I'll show you the bettas in the other two tanks. Here we have what I call the bow tank, that curved front 50 gallon tank. And uh, it's looking pretty good. The neons are out all over the place. Usually they're hiding in a corner someplace. And we put some of those autosynclius cats in here, five of them to be exact, to see what they would do with the glass. Because we did take the Pleco out of this tank. He just got too big and he was actually eating the neons uh, some months ago, as you remember. And so we gave him to Hidden Reef to give to another home. And uh, nothing else new here. The sword tails are adding a lot of orange to the tank, my wife made note of the other day. And these are all our baby sword tails grown up now. And I've gone from feeling I couldn't get any sword tails to where I've got plenty of sword tails, uh, both the uh, pineapple swords, as you saw in this other tank, and here the brick red swords, as we call them, uh, an orange colored sword. Back there is the big pearl garami. He's got some partners now and the small ones that have moved over from the corner tank. Right below him, hidden behind the plants, is one of them. 
And um, oh, those tetras, those very colorful, long, thin tetras are just gorgeous, and they're, they keep growing. They're, they're, they're at the point where I've seen them in show tanks and said, wow, look at those fish. I wish I could have them, but they're, those kind of fish would run about $35 a piece. And I bought three of them, as I recall, for like $12.99. They were small, and they have really thrived beautifully here, and they make a nice school of three as you can see. Uh, the plants are doing well. The kabamba is slowly coming back to the left there. And uh, I don't see any out of sync lays here. They could have been eaten by some of the big fish. The, the red-tailed sharks in this tank are huge. Uh, they are gorgeous. I mean, they're fully mature, so they have a dark black and a bright red finish to them. Very, very pretty, and they're not going to come out, of course. Uh, you can see one of the younger uh, Pelagoramis right there to the right, going up into, again, more of that plant that I got from Disc Man this, that is doing so well every place. And I could easily populate uh, these tanks with that again and again. I was talking to Bruce the other day and complimenting on how many of you have been following his uh, videos when I go up there and visit him. And uh, he seems to be doing well. And he's got his fish room set up so that he can go on vacation for a week at a time. In fact, he's leaving uh, in about two days, I think. And he comes back like the second week of October. And he's got automatic feeders on all ten of his tanks. And yeah, he did have that problem, the one that uh, malfunctioned and killed all the fish in that one tank. And I asked how he was doing. I haven't been up there recently. And he said all his bunch plants have uh, died. Don't know what that's about. Uh, he lives in a town called Metuchen, New Jersey. And uh, I was wondering if maybe they had treated their water differently for a different season. And if that uh, did those plants in. But he's got beautiful plants. So I'm looking forward to get up there. I've got some uh, hip surgery coming up early October. And so that'll keep me grounded for a little bit. But after that, he's back from his vacation. Uh, I'll go up and see him. And uh, we'll maybe add some more videos to that. Here's that little five-gallon maternity tank. Now, the, the sword tails I put in were very pregnant, but they never dropped their babies here. So I gave up. I'm taking the divider out so you could have two beds in here at a time. And just have the one, and I've got four uh, fairly small neons and two of those out of sync list to try and keep the glass clean. The uh, better that I'm trying to show you is up in the corner, and of course, he's I'm trying to tempt him out with some food. He's a, a brownish color, my wife actually called it yellow. And so, let's see if he'll come out for us. Here he comes. I need to go back behind the light to really get a good look at his coloration. He's a beautiful fish. And this is his new home. He just won't go into the light. Darn it! But you can get some idea of that finage. That finage is actually tan with a black edge to it. I tried to tempt him out with some food, but that's not working, so... It is what it is, as they would say. The other thing I wanted to show you is I was talking earlier about a great price for this Marineland Emperor filter cartridge, the E size, right size E, four count. Uh, this box will go $17, $18, $19 in any fish store. At Hidden Reef, 
over in Bristol, Pennsylvania, just over the bridge here, Burlington Bristol Bridge. These go for $5.69. And so the last time I was over there, I bought 10 boxes because right now, between the new big filter and the two smaller ones on these tanks, I use four of these each time I change all four. And so it's, a, it's such a great buy. Even my wife the other day said, aren't you going to get a couple more? I said, well, I still have 10. She says, yeah, but it's a good price. Said, well, you're right. So anyway, and also I realized I didn't show you the brilliant red betta in the bow tank. I was looking for him. I couldn't find him. He's in there someplace. It's absolutely gorgeous. My wife has a great eye for uh, bettas and fish in general. So anyway, that's uh, here in the office tank. And as you can see down in the corner here, uh, the fish are really going to town on that algae tab. And the snails will gather around that and I can use the net and just scoop up the snails.